Hey, welcome to North Village Church. My name is Michael and so excited to be with you uh, today. Uh, we're going to continue in our series called The Seven I Am Statements of Jesus. And today we're going to look at John chapter 6 when Jesus gives the invitation, I am the bread of life. All right. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. Oh man, th this, this statement is like a punch in the face, right? Jesus initially says this statement up on a hill, uh, but eventually the discussion makes its way to the synagogue around all these Jewish leaders. And when Jesus uses the phrase, I am, right? That's a, that's a Hebrew reference to the God of scripture. So that in that statement, I am the bread of life, Jesus is absolutely identifying himself as one with God and it would have been electric. Like it's surprising that there's not a riot in John chapter six because that's how uh, big of a deal it is. And so we're gonna dig into that uh, in scripture uh, today. But before we do, I wanna welcome uh, any, anybody who's new to North Village Church. Man, so glad you are watching online. These are crazy times and it is so important to be connected uh, to other people. So let me just tell you some primary ways to connect to North Village Church. And, and the first one is through our YouTube channel. You wanna to go to our YouTube channel, that's where you're gonna find the latest content. Even if you're a longtime partner of North Village Church, subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel because we wanna uh, create as much awareness about the gospel as possible through YouTube. Second is you wanna to go to our Facebook page. Facebook is where you're going to learn about the, the people of North Village Church, even if you're kind of anti-Facebook, that's okay. It's unusual times, calling for unusual things, and, um, and just jump into uh, Facebook with us during this season, uh, especially our Facebook watch uh, parties that we do on Sundays at 10 a.m. Man, hope you're here. It's, it's, it's a really great way to connect with our church, and next Sunday, we're going to celebrate communion as a church family. So we want you to get ready. Start getting ready and get you some, some grape juice, get you some Hawaiian bread, you know, something gluten-free maybe, and uh, get, get, those, get those things ready so that next Sunday we can celebrate communion as a church family. And then if you are new, go to our website, northvillagechurch.com forward slash COVID-19. There's a quick survey there, just a couple of questions for us to get to know you a little bit and, and learn how we can just best serve you uh, during this season. And, and then the last one is just our devotional. And this devotional has been so helpful for us. It's all of our sermons that we've been going through uh, for the year. It goes all the way to August and, and you can get one of these. Go to page 111 on Monday. Man, you're gonna start engaging God's word with North Village Church. And so, um, so glad you're watching and man, can't wait to get to know you a little bit. Um, so let's get into scripture. Let's get into John chapter six. We started off the series, John chapter one, and, and we see Jesus' invitation to come and see. And, and today in John chapter six, uh, we see Jesus give this just powerful statement. I am the bread of life. And we're going to uh, break down the passage into three sub points. And you can write these subpoints in your notes. The first one is that Jesus is sustenance to the mind. The second one is that Jesus is sustenance to the body. And the third one is that Jesus is sustenance to the soul. And write that in your notes. Uh, we typically go by uh, verse by verse on Sunday mornings, but things are different. And so we've asked uh, Scott Clayton from our very own church family to read our passage in its entirety. And Scott is going to read John 6, verses 28 to 35. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do, so that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What then do you do for a sign, so that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
It is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Thanks, Scott. That was, that was fantastic. It's a powerful passage. Uh, but let me give you some background uh, before we get into our, our points, uh, because John 6, uh, Jesus is, has just fed 5,000 people. And food's a big deal. Food's a big deal today. Food's a big deal then. I mean, back then, you, you were always wondering where your next meal is going to come from. And, and today, uh, food is much more available. But, but food is still, like, pretty important. I mean, especially in, in Austin, because we have, like, like so much good food. Uh, in Austin, we're so spoiled. Uh, I, we got our, our favorite barbecue. We got the Ruby Pearl right here in Austin. That's our, our favorite uh, barbecue. Uh, our family loves uh, Amaya's Taco Village. Ooh, go there uh, right off of I-35, get you some puffy tacos. Uh, so good, so good. I, I was thinking about uh, today, and, and so I had to run and grab, grab some lunch. Went to Cabo Bob's. You ever go to Cabo Bob's? Just right, right down the road off of uh, Shoal Creek and, and Anderson. This is uh, fish tacos. This is so good. Like I get you, look at they give you a lime. These guys are set up. Squeeze a little lime on there. Yeah. And then uh, man, we go here all the time. Always, always have a good experience. Mmm. Oh. Can you smell it? It's good. I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. This is taking me like 17 takes. I've run out of tacos, but man, food is so good. Food is so important, right? In fact, this week, go um, find your favorite food. Take a photo of it. Remember we used to take photos of food? <laughs> Post that on social media. Tag North Village Church. We can celebrate food. Food's a big deal. In John 6, same thing. Man, food's a big deal. People are gathering around Jesus, and uh, they're curious about Jesus. They've heard Him teach. They're seeing His life. They're in awe of Him. And it says that Jesus ends up feeding 5,000 people. Now, I'll swallow eventually. Stay with me. When the text says 5,000 people, like it's probably not including uh, women and children. So we could be talking about maybe 15,000, 20,000 people here. Um, and in this moment, Jesus takes five barley loaves, two fishes, and somehow feeds <laughs> the masses. I'm mean, just kind of sit in that for a moment. I mean, imagine all these people being fed, food being left over, people just in awe. And then right in that moment, and Jesus says, look at me. Look at me. I am the bread of life. All who come to me will never hunger. All who believe in me will never thirst. Those are powerful words, still today. And that's the background of our passage, so that in verses 28 to 35, we see our first sub-point, that Jesus is sustenance to the mind. Write that in your notes. Jesus is sustenance to the mind. Jesus is sustenance to the mind because like this whole passage is like brain food, right? It just draws us in with questions. Sometimes people will present Jesus like it's real simple. He's just like this good guy who went around, and did some nice things, you know. Come on, man, this whole passage, uh, your brain has to be firing off questions like, how did Jesus feed 5,000 people? 
uh, you know, there's no golden corral, right? <laughs> and then if it's a miracle, are miracles uh, even real? And then when Jesus says he's the bread of life, what's that talking about? Like, are we supposed to eat Jesus? I mean, especially in our modern ears, right? We've been heavily influenced by uh, the Enlightenment, the age of the Enlightenment, uh, so that uh, when we read John 6, like our brain is just full of skepticism, like, well, can we really trust this story? Like, maybe it's been embellished. It was really five people. And then over the years, it was 50, 500, 5,000, you know, like just, all right, there's just all these questions that just pull, pull us in uh, to this passage. Maybe there's some of us that want to minimize uh, the miraculous. Like you, you read John chapter six and, and still today, there are people who profess faith in Jesus, but they just, they remove the miraculous parts. They just focus on the, the human part of Jesus. That's exactly what Thomas Jefferson did. Our third U.S. president, his brain just didn't know how to comprehend the miraculous parts of Jesus. He's influenced by philosophers uh, in the Enlightenment, like Rousseau and, and Vol Voltaire. So that literally he takes a razor and just goes to the life of Jesus and just and just cuts up the parts that are miraculous and just just leaves them out right because his brain right Jesus is sustenance to the mind just didn't know how to comprehend it if you think about our educational system today like our elementary students right now in school they're, they're learning uh, scientific method, right? Hypothesis, analyze, research, conclusions. So it's all, it's all around training their brains to think through concrete data so, so that they come to John chapter six and they're just like 5,000. That doesn't make sense. I am the bread of life. That doesn't make sense. And, and so John chapter six is just, Jesus is sustenance to the mind. It just fills us with, with, all types of questions. It's questions for us today. It was questions uh, for the original audience. And, and what Jesus does in John chapter 6 is that in the midst of the masses, when all eyes are on him, he just says, look at me. Like you're in awe. Wow, this is cool. Look at me. I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst again. That's, that's the purpose. Right? You see all these questions in Scripture. We don't need to be a, afraid of questions. The questions are there to draw us in to see Jesus, to be in awe of Jesus. I mean, if you want to go with questions, I mean, you could have questions about the questions. Why, why are people minimizing the miraculous parts of God? Why are you believing in a God and then saying, well, that God can't do anything that I don't think is possible, right? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> or, or, or why are you putting so much confidence in science? I mean, the whole purpose of science is to research and discover and, and to learn. And so it's absolutely possible that there are things we can't explain. And that's what's happening in John chapter 6. Jesus is using the miraculous parts of his life to demonstrate his power, eyes on him. Say, look at me. I am the bread of life. That's our, that's our first, our first subpoint is that Jesus is sustenance to the mind. Our second subpoint is that Jesus is sustenance to the body. Now, in in one way, we don't want to get distracted. Uh, by Jesus feeding 5,000 people, right? That's, that's not the point. And at the same time, we don't want to overlook that Jesus fed 5,000 people, that Jesus is literally meeting tangible needs of hunger in the life of these men and women. It's because Jesus is sustenance to the body that Jesus cares about our physical needs. I mean, after all, 
I mean, in John chapter 6, uh, Jesus is displaying his power, and he could have displayed his power any number of ways, right? He's God in the flesh, all-powerful, eternal. I mean, he could have flown across the sky, wowed the crowds, right? He could have um, cast lightning bolts down from the sky. He could have teleported from one place to another. I mean, that definitely would have left people in awe and got their attention, but uh, he doesn't. And he doesn't. Instead, uh, when you look at Jesus' words, when you look at Jesus live, he's meeting real, physical, tangible needs in the life of, of these men and women. And it's because Jesus is sustenance to the body. Write that in your notes. In fact, when Jesus performs this miracle in John 6, it's as though Jesus is saying with his life that the brokenness of the world is, is a problem. Right? That, 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 the pain and, that he's not okay with the pain and suffering in our world. Right? That, that hunger and hurting people are in his eyesight. Right? That it's not normal. It's not what he created. It's not a reflection of his character. In no way is Jesus walking, God in the flesh, walking in humanity, walking past pain and suffering and being indifferent. I mean, he absolutely cares about the pain and suffering in our world. Like, like right now, like we're going through this quarantine and and I don't know about you, but you're watching this on the news, right? Disease and death is just like oh, off, the, off the charts. And there's just story after story of, of heartache and, and grief. And like we're, we're, we're watching and we're going through this. And like it, it bothers us. Have you noticed? Like, like some of us get angry about it. Some of us get numb. Some of us can't stop watching it. Like we just consume ourselves uh, with it. It's because it it bothers us and it's because we are made in his image and it bothers him. I mean, he absolutely wants to meet physical needs in our life. And when you look at John 6, the primary way that Jesus is meeting needs in the lives of these men and women is through other people. Does that make sense? I mean, if you look at John chapter 6, Verse 5, Jesus and the disciples walk up. There's this large crowd. Jesus turns to the disciples and says, what are we going to do? Think about that. What are we going to do? And then one of the disciples sees a boy with uh, five barley loaves, two fishes, and, and barley would have been the poorest grain. Uh, so this is likely a, a boy that's coming from a place of poverty, likely he, He's not in a, a position of status in the community, and yet Jesus involves this boy, and he involves the disciples in meeting real, tangible, physical needs. Does that make sense? So that, like when we're in this quarantine season of life, Jesus absolutely wants to involve us in meeting the needs, physical needs of other people. He wants to meet our physical needs for us to receive that from other people. And he, and he wants to involve us in the meeting of needs in the lives of other people. Do, do you believe that about yourself? I mean, I know it's crazy time. I mean, I personally, I feel like I'm at the weakest I've ever been. I feel like I have the least uh, to offer. I, I don't feel like, like I can contribute a lot. Like, uh, I feel really limited, uh, in fact. And yet at the same time, Jesus is absolutely inviting us 
to be a part of meeting physical needs in the lives of other people. Yeah. I mean, it's pro pro <laughs> the President of the United States is probably not going to call and ask for our advice on like how to solve COVID-19. I don't know, my brain always kind of goes to like global scale problems, you know, like, oh, how am I going to solve world hunger? <laughs> So maybe we shouldn't start there. I mean, it could happen. I don't want to limit you. But, um, and what does it look like? Think about that for a second. What does it look like for you to be involved, for Jesus to move through you to meet needs for other people? I mean, our teachers right now, right, around the world, killing it, doing great, right, off the charts, just flexing and adapting getting uh, education into our students. That's really beautiful. So proud of the teachers in our church family. They're doing a great job. Um, nurses, doctors, first responders around the world, right? I mean, it's easy to connect the dots and how Jesus is moving through them. Like that, the men and women in our church family, if you're in that role, like you're the hands and feet of Jesus, you may not be a teacher or a first responder or a doctor, but that doesn't negate that you have something to contribute. Being aware of your neighbors, writing down their names, praying for them, making yourselves available, just voluntarily putting groceries on their doorstep. That's real. Um, showing up to a community group right, with a smiling face, ready to give your whole self because it's not it's not for you, right? The group's not for you. The group's for those other men and women. And so you're coming prepared to, to give yourself to that time, even if it's on Zoom. Maybe to even give uh, requests, to make requests for prayer, just to humble yourself, to, to receive care from other people. That's a, that's a part, of, part of the process. Every every. Every man, woman, and child absolutely has something to offer during this season, some, some way to be a part of the solution. Man, I want you to hear that. Jesus is absolutely inviting us to bring our, our barley loaves and fishes. And he can use them in a way to meet tangible needs. And this last week, we did quarantine bingo on our Facebook page, and it's just a a silly way to kind of help the juices start turning and thinking about, man, what does it look like to be a part of that solution in our, in our world today? I, I think that's probably the most miraculous part of John chapter 6. Like the feeding of the 5,000 is cool. Jesus' words are awesome. But what blows me away about John chapter 6 is that he involves the disciples, that he involves this boy in this story of Jesus work in humanity that that just blows me away so our first sub point is that Jesus is sustenance to the mind our second sub point is that Jesus is sustenance to the body and our third sub point is that Jesus is sustenance to the soul when Jesus says the phrase he who comes to me will not hunger in verse 35 Jesus is saying, like, your physical hunger is important. It's important to Jesus. But there's always going to be a, a physical hunger. And what Jesus is really saying in John chapter 6 is that Jesus has come to satisfy a spiritual hunger. Right, write that in your notes. Jesus has come to satisfy a spiritual hunger. I mean, think about that. I mean, have you noticed, like, um, like there's all these emotions going on in, inside of us in, in, in this season, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're angry, we're, we're numb, uh, we're restless, we're, we're frustrated, and, and so then we find ourselves thinking of, like, oh, I need to go take a nap. Right, or I need I need to watch a movie, or I, I just need to go for a walk, and, and and those things aren't bad. But what's really going on there is that Jesus, in this quarantine, 
Jesus is stirring up in us a spiritual hunger. Now, now lean in with me because this is, this is a bit abstract. Young people, if you're, if you're spiritual hunger, that desire you have to be popular in school, that desire you have to make good grades or uh, to get the attention of that teacher or that coach or whatever it is, like all those desires are really starting from a place of, of spiritual hunger. And, and during this season, Jesus is absolutely like stirring up in us and exposing our spiritual hunger. Uh, you see it in John chapter 6. I mean, that's why when, when Jesus uh, gathers all these people around him, and then he turns to the disciples and says, what are we going to do? The people are hungry. What are we going to do? He is stirring up in the disciples like an awareness of their spiritual hunger, right? Where they, they've, they've reached uh, the end of their ability. 5,000 people, what are we going to like, Do you feel like that in the, in the quarantine, right? Where... Um, you know, your children, maybe if you have children, your children are looking at you and they just have this look on their face like, what are we going to do? Like, how much longer are we going to be here? How much longer is it going to be? Maybe your spouses or you ever have like the big eyes just like, I don't like, I don't know how much longer I can take this. What are we going? Maybe, maybe there's like bills like staring you in the face. Uh, you know, you're moving some things around with your finances and like, what are we going to like, what are we, like an employer? Is looking at you like, are you able to do this? Like, what are like, what are we, what are we, what are we, what are we going to do? Like that feeling, that angst you feel, that's that, that's our spiritual hunger, kind of coming to the surface. And I'll be honest with you, when 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 the quarantine first started, I, I thought it was kind of fun. First couple of weeks, right? You know, it's like uh, problem solving. I thought it was fun. Like, hey, okay, what are we gonna do? New routines, you know? Maybe get to watch some Netflix or take a nap, change things up. But after like six, seven weeks, it's not fun, right? The newness has worn off and I, I'm starting to look in the mirror of like, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, it's just like, what am I going to do? That's exactly what's going on in, in John chapter uh, six. Um, and it's, it's important that we see that, like that we're in this season. It may be the best part of the, the quarantine is that Jesus is using this season to stir up in us an awareness of our spiritual hunger. Because if you're, if you're with me, if you see that spiritual hunger in your life right now, then I, I want you to hear the words of Jesus in John chapter 6. Jesus leans forward in the midst of our hunger and says, look at me. And look at me. I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. Listen to me. When Jesus says the phrase, I am the bread of life, that word life in the original language is it's the word zoe. And it's not biological life. It's not zero to 90 years on earth life. It's the substance of life. That's what it literally means. Like, I am the substance of life. I'm the purpose of life. I, I, I'm, I'm the joy of life. You see, if you're in that place where you're, you see your spiritual hunger come into the surface, it's likely that we think to ourselves, oh, I just need to change some things. I, I need to go for a walk. I need to change my diet. I need to, you know, get a, a different political leader. I, I, I need to change my sleeping patterns. I, I need to get this vaccine because this vaccine is going to, it's going to fix it. And those things aren't wrong. Like those things are all great. But what Jesus is doing in this time is, is, is stirring up in us um, a spiritual hunger that can only be satisfied in him. And Him alone. And so in this moment, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, Jesus is using this season to call out an invitation. Look at me. 
I am the bread of life. So John chapter 5, verse 24, John writes, These things I have written so that you may know Jesus, that you may believe in Jesus, that you may have life in Jesus. That's the invitation. That's, that's the invitation to know Jesus. So how does that happen? How do we, how do we feast on Jesus? So yeah, this time on video, worship time on video, absolutely. I pray it feeds our souls that we see Jesus and like a good meal we feast. Also time in God's Word. Every day, it's Jesus. It's His life. It's His Word from Genesis to Revelation. Feast on Him. Time in prayer. Talking to Him. Listening. Hearing from Him. Individually, collectively. We meet every Every day, we're going to meet today, 12 p.m. to 12.40. You sit and just listen to people pray. That'll, that'll feed your soul. But listen to me, that, that nurturing on Jesus, it's also in the, the flaws of our life, right? That if, if you're walking through this, season and you're, and you're seeing a harshness with your children or a tone with your spouse or disappointment with your employer, like you need to know that the Holy Spirit isn't saying like, come on, get your act together, this again, like you're horrible, when are you going to learn? Like it's none of that. Like in every one of those moments, it's really, it's really His grace. It's a means of His grace exposing our spiritual hunger and then saying, oh, look at Jesus. Feed on Jesus. Fall into the arms of Jesus. Feast on Jesus. There is life in Jesus. Won't you, won't you do that with me? Like, won't you come with me, with our church family, come to God's Word and find sustenance for your mind, exploding with questions. The well is deep. It draws us in. Jesus is sustenance to the mind. Jesus is sustenance to the body. Right? He wants to meet physical needs. He's most likely looking to, to involve us in the meeting of those physical needs. And Jesus is sustenance to the soul. He's going to bring a satisfaction that's greater than any nap, any change of scenery, any escape that we might pursue. It's a sustenance that lasts, satisfies. I mean, if you've yet to believe in Jesus, do that right now. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is God in the flesh. Believe in your heart that He resurrected from the dead, that He conquered your sin, and you shall be saved. You shall find life in Him. Will you pray with me? Well, Father in heaven, we thank you so much um, for an opportunity to dig into Scripture, to see just the awe and glory of Jesus. And I pray for every one of us that are watching this video right now, that we would find life in Jesus. A satisfaction that is beyond our explanation. That's how 1 Peter describes it. The Apostle Peter says that Jesus filled him with a joy that was inexpressible. That's the type of satisfaction I pray for me and for all those of us who are watching this video, that we would find satisfaction in Jesus where we just start to explain it and then we just have no words. Like I just, I just can't explain it, but we know it. We've tasted of it. And we've seen him, and we've walked with him, we've heard him. Father, I pray for that for every one of us. It's in Jesus' name.